I'm Tim Myers from Barham Avocados. And where are you located, Tim? We're located 15 kilometres outside of Barham, which is near the Murray River, New South Wales. Perfect. So this structure, this retractable flat roof has now been constructed five years ago. Yes. And what variety avocado do you have in here? So these are Hass variety avocados, and we have two different rootstocks. We have a Dusa rootstock up this end, and Ashdot rootstock up the other end. So can you just describe the, uh, the climate, both summer and winter? What's kind of your lows and highs through the winter and then through the summer? So in summer, we get frequent days over 40 degrees, can get up to 47, 48. Uh, in winter time, we get a few frosts. Um, it can get as low as minus five. We, will, we can bank on getting a few frosts around minus two and three. So when you've got temperatures of 42, 47, what's your relative humidity here? It can get as low as 8%. So you've got a very high transpiration environment here. Yep. So, um, so let's talk about the key learning in terms of what's your strategy for when do you retract the roof in the morning, when do you close at midday? So in the winter time, uh, the roof opens at 10 degrees and shuts again at 10 degrees in the evening. Uh, in summertime, we shut the roof uh, at around, it's about, around about 34 degrees air temperature okay. uh, to shade the trees. Right, so and you've got the retractable white cooling roof here, so the yep. primary purpose is to help the tree get through the summer heat. So now that you've been growing these trees for five years, and if we look over here we can see the same same trees outside. So these this is a, a direct comparison. So if we talk about what were the key results of key learning from the avocados in the retractable roof in comparison into the uh, the regular open orchard. So the trees grew a lot faster. Um, we've had to prune them uh, many times. We haven't pruned the outdoor trees at all. Uh, the leaf size has always been bigger. Um, and yeah, the shoots have been much more aggressive. Um, water use has been massively reduced. We're using 70% less water in the ground. 70% and that's measured in the course of the whole year or measured through the summer? Measured through, that's measured through the course of the whole year. So you would be using, the, the savings will be less in the winter because you're irrigating less, your savings will be higher in the summer. That's right. Because yep. that's when your, your evapotranspiration is yep. higher. Yep. 70%. Okay. So let, let's talk a little bit about uh, pollination, number of flowers, fruit size, fruit quality, yield. What's yep. been the key learning so far? So pollination, um, is we expect pollination to be better in here because we have higher insect activity. Um, the insect activity has also been a bit of a downside for us um, in fruit quality. We're getting some insect damage, mainly from light brown apple moth. And we've tried to control that with beneficial insects to avoid using insecticide. Um, we've had moderate success with that, so we may, we may need to explore other options to try and control the insects. Uh, yield wise, almost doubled. Uh, it was 80% increase in the first harvest and uh, just over 90% increase in the second harvest uh, and the third one, the third harvest is six months away. Excellent. Now in terms of the uh, apple moth we were just discussing some control strategies and uh, it was suggested that they might be more active at night and so when are you opening and closing the walls right now? So the walls are just opening and closing on wind we're trying to keep the walls open as much as we can to keep good ventilation in there um, and reduce the humidity. We, we, we're trying to reduce the humidity a little bit to reduce the growth. Um, so the, the walls are opening and closing just on wind speed, so 15 kilometres an hour and over, they'll shut. Okay. Yep. Because one of the things we have observed is that when you have closed walls, you tend to reduce the insect pressure because the insects cannot fly directly in. Mm. So if the moths were active, for example, at night, closing the, the walls at night could reduce the entry of it. Mm. So that may be something that would be worth exploring going into the next season. Mm, definitely. Uh, anything in terms of foliar diseases? No, we've ha we haven't had any other disease pressures. Um, we just do our normal disease program with copper sprays for um, anthracnose on the fruit. And we do our normal uh, phos acid program for Phytophthora root rot. So they're getting the same program as the outdoor trees and seems to be working fine. Now you mentioned that the yield was up 80% and 90%. 
is that due to a higher quantity of fruit or more of an increase in fruit size? Uh, it's just the quantity. Fruit size has been the same. Okay. Yep. Tim, can you just uh, quickly again summarize the two different rootstocks and what your key learnings were? So the two rootstocks we have in here are Dusa and Ashdot. The Dusa are quite a vigorous rootstock uh, and probably a little bit too vigorous for this high density. Uh, the Ashdot may be a bit better suited to it. They're supposed to be a dwarfing rootstock. Um, they can be a little bit inconsistent because they're not a clonal tree. Um, so that can, yeah, just create a bit of inconsistency down the row. Um, and they're a bit out of sync with each other. So the Dusa had a big yield last year and will be the reverse this year. Great. Well, that is a fantastic summary, Tim. Thank you very much for sharing your experiences. No worries at all. Appreciate it.